Karen Metz has a severe sinus infection, and Christina has been fighting long-term effects of COVID, and it's good to see her out tonight. And Andy had a bad reaction to the first second shot. Want to remember to pray for Blaine Dent, or Ruth's brother Blaine, and uh, he's back in the hospital waiting for a bed in Morgantown. They want to fix his leaking valve and they need to determine if they can do the procedure. Remember Judy Davis, uh, she's dealing with health problems at Paul Ruth's uh, daughter. But, uh, and Paul Lemon, he's in the nursing home and he's doing about the same. Want to remember Roy and his family as he deals with his cancer treatment. And uh, Wednesday, Roy will have a port put in and uh, so he can give him his IVs and stuff. And Friday, we have a CAT scan to make sure that his cancer hasn't spread. And Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays every week for seven weeks, he'll uh, be having uh, chemo and radiation. And uh, we want to remember. Ronnie Fletcher, that's uh, Kathy Castanelli's brother, his left ventricle is blocked and well, he will need to have surgery on March 1st. And Wendell Hendershot uh, had some tests and got results he may have bone cancer. And got one here that says Bryn. Brentley Perkins is a little eight-year-old boy who has been diagnosed with epilepsy. And he's about to have a birthday, and he's really down in the dumps about his diagnosis. And cards would really cheer him up if anyone would like to send, send him one. And he's got his address here. Um, it'll be here in the bulletin time if anybody wants it. Any other announcements? Yeah, I yeah, failed to tell you. I'm sorry. I, I made a bunch of tasks for this address to it. Just want to grab one off of the bulletin board. Oh, okay. Jenny put tabs on the bulletin board with the address. Okay, remember all these people and keep them in your prayers. And for the upcoming events, uh, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And tomorrow night is the Monday Night Merge at uh, Camden Avenue Church of Christ. And the elders and preachers will have a meeting at 4.45 uh, on Tuesday. And is there anything else that needs to be announced on the events? Okay. Tyler is going to be leaving the same. I'll go with him. All right, great. Uh, starting off with 100. How are you left your room this morning? How are you left your room this morning?
because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath on unchangeable priesthood, wherever he is able, also to save them to the utmost that comes until God by him, seeing he never lived to make intercession for them. I have to thank uh, Tyler for that song. I was real tempted not to come tonight. But uh, prayer fixes a lot of things. So let's go to God in prayer this time. Father, we thank you for this day. We just come before you with praise and thanksgiving. Thank you for your mercy and your grace for all that you do for us. Father, forgive us our sins. Help us, Father, to be ever diligent to resist the temptations that we face day by day. And to, to know no matter what happens, Father, to lay all of our cares upon you, for we know that you care for us. Father, we pray that you would uh, be with us throughout this worship service and everything said and done. Is that pleasing in your sight? Well, we pray your blessings upon the elders as they guide us here. Uh, Father, we pray for your the elders of your church the world over that you would give them all wisdom and courage and strength. Father, we pray for all those of your household that you give each of us a spirit to work that we might be busy while we still have day and uh, that we would spread the gospel and uh, usher in as many souls as we can, Father, into your kingdom. Father, we pray for all men everywhere that uh, you would bless each one, that you would heal the sick, deliver the oppressed and the afflicted. We pray, Father, especially for those in seats of authority, that you would bless them and guide them, Father. Turn their hearts that they might do your will, that we might live in godliness and peace. All these things, Father, we pray through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Uh, next is 385. No tears in heaven. Oh. Hi. I couldn't read the Oh, my mistake. <laughs> you couldn't tell handwriting was 
on, on the list of not one of my talents, along with song leading, right under it. <laughs> no tears in heaven for you. <laughs> no tears in heaven. No sorrows given. Oh. Crucified, sound his prayer. 
Good evening. Good evening. We'll try this again. That was me that did that. Okay, this should work better. So mind of its solo bottom. That's probably why I did that. It has a mind of its own sometimes. It's good to see everybody tonight. Certainly glad you are with us tonight. It's good that we can worship in spirit and truth. If you have your Bibles tonight, please open to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Get close. We've been talking about Melchizedek the last few weeks. In our Sunday night lessons, we had two or three lessons on Melchizedek and well, we kind of shift gears a little bit tonight. You might say, look at the title, The Great High Priest. And, and I think we're in the same line of thought, but we're, we're kind of, we'll, we'll mention that name a couple of times, but we're come, kind of coming off that thought. But when you look at Hebrews chapter 7 in your Bibles, you see a couple of things. You see verses 1 through 9. And, and so your title in verse 1 through 9, or the first few words of chapter verse 1 says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God. And so it's going to talk about Melchizedek in the first nine verses. Then we're going to switch gears when we come into verse, verse 10 verses, excuse me. Then we're going to switch gears when we come into verse 11. And see our topic change there. Now, if perfected had been perfection had been obtained through the Levitical priesthood, and if you underline in your Bible, underline Levitical priesthood there. For under it the people received the law, where further needed would be there been for another priest to arise. So now we begin to talk about the Levitical priesthood. So if you look down and go down all the way to verse 18. So remember, we're talking about the Levitical priesthood here, still in verse 18. So our text really begins here. For on the one hand, a former commandment is set aside because of its weakness and uselessness. Well, what is weak and what is useless? The Levitical priestly system, or what we would call the Old Testament law, or what many of us would call the law of Moses, going back, starting with the Ten Commandments. So this time we're calling it weak, and the Hebrew writer anyway, is calling it weak and useless. And then he says this, for the law made nothing perfect. And there's the problem. So he outlines the problem in, in parentheses there. Your Bible probably has parentheses around that. But on the other hand, a better hope is introduced. So there's our thought that's going to carry us through the rest of the book of Hebrews. A better hope is introduced. So here's the, the, the screenshot, if you will, the, the, the opening. Well, what is that better hope? And of course, we know that better hope is Jesus Christ. And we're going to begin tonight to look at that better hope. It says the better hope is introduced, uh, though we which, through which we draw near to God. So we'll be talking about that later tonight. So what we're going to look at briefly is the old priest, if you will. And so we'll look at that for a few minutes. Moving into this idea of drawing near to God and how we do that and who does that for us, part of the better system. And then we look briefly at the new high priest. And so we're going to look just to get a, a history lesson, if you will, the old high priest and see what we saw there and, and the system that, that was not perfect, drawing near to God. How do we do that? And we do that through our new high priest. And so we'll look at that uh, this evening as we look at the text. We do notice that, that Raymond Brown noted in his commentary, he says, Priestly, Christ's priestly work and sacrifice involve these things. A permanent achievement, limitless power, present ministry, sinless character and perfect offering. So certainly those last two, the sinless character and perfect offering, uh, we'll look at 
as we studied through tonight. So we notice the priest of the past. In Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 23, it was read wonderfully just a moment ago. Also, there were many priests. Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he continues forever, has unchangeable priesthood. You might say, well, wait a minute, did Christ die? Well, he died on the cross and he overcame death. So technically he did not, as they would say, um, as Peter would say in his sermon on, in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, you know, David, he would reference David, David is dead and in the tomb and you can dig up his body and guess what? He's still in the tomb. But Christ is not. Christ has risen. Christ has been ascended up in heaven as the right hand of God. And, and so when we look at this, priests were serving at the temple at the time of the writing of the book of Hebrews before the fall of Jerusalem, about AD 70. Most, there's, there's two dates. Um, when we look at many of these books, there's, there's studies on dates when these books were felt to, to be written. Um, and normally there's this young and old theory. In this particular case, I go through, go for the young theory. The young theory is about 64 AD, 63 to 64 AD. The old theory is about 96 AD. And the reason I go for the young theory here is because it makes a lot more sense. So if you put this, the, the before AD 70, things in the government there, in, in the Rome, in the um, Jer Jerusalem area, were a lot different than they were after AD 70. So the book of Hebrews makes mention of many of the things, the priestly system, the things were that were in order uh, before AD 70, and they were taken out of order in AD 70. When Jerusalem was destroyed, all that priestly system was gone. And, and so it wasn't, you know, wasn't there anymore. So if we take this younger day, which we believe, so it was before 8070 when the temple was destroyed and the sacrifices ended at what? Now numerous or great numbers of high priests served under the law because of death or limited time in office. Whereas they but one high priest for time in the church. Josephus notes that there were 83 high priests before the fall of Jerusalem. Many other priests served with a total at any one time being 1,500 priests. Well, we don't think of it, at, we think of, when we think of the Bible, we think of really one high priest, if you will, and most of us go to Aaron and think, well, Aaron was the high priest. Well, Aaron had his time and then it, he, he died. And so when we see that phrase there, he died. And, and every time we see a record of a high priest in scripture, which many of those are in Chronicles and other books that we normally don't spend that much time in, it concludes with phrases like, and he died. Well, we would expect that because we'll see that at, at our, our place sometime. But So Moses took Aaron and his son Eleazar to the top of Mount Or and removed Aaron's priestly garments and gave them to his son. Aaron died on the top of the mountain. So on and on it went with the passing of previous high priests and the passing on of the priesthood and the abiding nature of Christ's superior high priesthood it is seen in the words that he continued forever. His term as a priest never ends. And, and so I want you to picture this word better. I, I didn't get a banner made or a poster or anything like that, but you can pretend I have one. This is a cheap banner or poster I'm holding and it says the word better across it. And, and, and this is our high priest. And for a matter of fact, you can take this better and use it for the whole book of Hebrews. You can take this better and use it for Christianity. You can take this better and apply it to every situation where Christ is at or Christ is involved. It's better. It will make your life better and make everything it touches better. And, and so this is kind of an important word when we look at, at Christ, how much better he is and how much better his priesthood is than all of the priesthoods combined from the past. Hebrews 7 and verse 21, for they have become priests without an oath, but he with, with an oath by him who said to him, the Lord has sworn an oath and he will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In Hebrews 7 verse 16, who has become such 
who has become such not on the basis of law, of physical requirements, but according to the power of indestructible life. Well, who is the only one who has an indestructible life? Jesus. Who is the only one that was sinless? Jesus. So Christ still has the power he exercised on earth by healing and performing other miracles. Even though the age of miracles has, has ceased once the gospel was confirmed, and, and while hearing about the miracles of Christ during his early ministry should have strengthened the early Christian's faith, that may not have been enough. Perhaps they were wondering what has Christ done for us since that time. So we look at the high, the old high, the old priesthood, if you will. But secondly, we notice drawing near to God. That's so important for us as Christians to draw near to God. It's important for those who aren't Christians to become Christians to draw near to God. Hebrews seven verse twenty five. Therefore, He is able also to save forever those who draw near to God. Well, let's look at this before we finish it. He is able, who, who is the he here? Jesus is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him, Jesus, since he, Jesus, always lives to make intercession for them. Now this word intercession is he comes to God on our behalf. You might think of it as attorney. If you ever had to have an attorney for something, um, you know, you can see, watch court cases on TV. You know, if you watch Madlock or something like that, you see Madlock is an attorney. That's his job. You know, and if he has a, a defendant, he, he represents that defendant. And the defendant won't say, well, I'm just going to go represent myself because that's just not a good idea. You know, every attorney will tell you that it's not a good idea to represent yourself. So you get Madlock. If I ever have legal trouble, I want Madlock to represent me. And, and so he, he would come up there and say, Your Honor, I have this evidence and this evidence and this evidence. And, and he intercedes for the person. Well, Christ intercedes for us. He represents us. He's the one who's able to, you know, if it's just me and God, I'm not able to get to God. You're not able to get, to, we're not able to reach God. We're not able to draw near to God, but because Christ is there, Christ allows us through his priesthood to draw near to God. And that's so important. The last high priest in Jerusalem was placed in that position by the Jewish zealots as a mockery. He was an unworthy individual who scarcely knew what the high priesthood meant. The ineffectiveness of that high priest is a sharp contrast to Christ's ability to save forever. Notice that in verse 25. It says, save forever. Have you ever thought about that being saved forever? Christ, is, as long as we walk in the light, as 1 John 1, 7, 1 says, Christ is able to save us forever. His death did not curtail his high priesthood, for he was shortly thereafter raised from the dead and lives forever. Romans chapter 6 and verse 9 says, Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again, death no longer is master over him. Never to die again. So he's that priest that goes on. Christ is able to save in part because he lives forever out of a high priest. It is his part demonstrates of demonstration of power is no longer visible, but he does now demonstrate the power that has no limitation in either time or eternity. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, though he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered, having been made perfect. Wait a minute. Didn't we just look at Passage it said in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11, or excuse me, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 19 it says, For on one hand, 
a former commandment set aside because of its weakness, its uselessness, for the law made nothing perfect. And now we see that, that in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, well, he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered and had been made perfect. See, Christ, the better one, has been made perfect. He became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation. Where do we look to for salvation, Jesus? Why? Because it's better. It's better. Jesus continues to save, doesn't he? And until that day where people take their last breath, Jesus will save. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13, a, a well-known passage to many. No temptation has overtaken you, for such is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will provide a way of escape. And I have in quotation or in, in parentheses, save us. God will allow a, a place for salvation there. There's no temptation that is stronger than God, so that you will be able to endure it. Jude chapter 1 and verse 24, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his, whole, whole, his, excuse me, his glory blameless with great joy. Who is that Christ? He, he, he keeps us from stumbling. Why? Because he's better. Romans 8, verse 33 and 34. Who being a... Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies, who is the one who condemns. Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather, he was raised and sits at the right hand of God who also intercedes for us. And so he brings us closer to God. John 14, verse 6, Jesus, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. What's he do? He brings us closer to God. Now, we get the idea that, that under the high priest, the old high priestly system, that, that we couldn't get much closer to God because it's an imperfect system. It's not a complete system. It, it, you know, because of sins, and we, we go into the, you know, the new priestly system, which is Christ, it's better, and Christ is able to bring us close to God. The word translated intercession is found nowhere else in this epistle, the book of Hebrews, but it's used by Paul in regard to intercession by the Spirit and by Christ. Romans 8, verse 26, in the same way the Spirit also helps our weakness. Why are we weak? Yes. But we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Sometimes we know what we want to say. We say it. And sometimes people say, well, how do you pray? And we look at maybe the model prayer or something like that. But what we really see in Scripture is we pray with course, thankful hearts. We pray with, with humble. We pray with, you know, honoring God. But we pray with our heart. You know, sometimes we look at somebody and say, well, how do I ask that? Well, you just, sometimes you just ask out of your heart, don't you? Well, we just ask out of, and one thing with prayer is we need to make sure we're living our life right and and doing what God wants us to do, that's part of, of the deal. Isaiah 53 and verse 12, Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great. He will divide the booty with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, yet he himself bore the sins of many. Who are we talking about? Christ. And intercedes for the transgressors. So we see the old priestly system, we see how Christ draws us nearer to God. And finally this evening, let's look at our great high priest. Hebrews 7, verse 26 and verse 27, for it was fitting for us to have such a great high priest. 
That's nice, isn't it? It was fitting. It, it was appropriate. It, it was good. Not that we deserve that, but, but God says this, this fits the picture. You ever see a, a kid put on somebody's coat? Maybe their dad's coat. A little kid puts on a dad's coat and things like that. Or, or maybe a sports jacket or something. And, and it just hangs off them. You see a little kid walking around with dad's sports jacket or maybe dad's jacket or something like that. Just hanging off. It doesn't fit, does it? And it's going to be years before it fits. You know, God, this is fitting. It's fitting for Christ to be in this role. God knew that from the foundation of the earth. This plan was put into place before man was created in Genesis chapter 1. You say, what do you mean God knew that man would sin? No, it seems that way. And God knew that there had to be a, a sacrifice for our sin. And that sacrifice was his son, Jesus. And Jesus would be that great high priest. He says, for it's fitting for us to have such a high priest. And you say, well, wait a minute. You know, we've sinned. We don't deserve a high priest. And, 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 and you know, you, you, you take the most horrible person and say, how can this person, they've robbed and they've stealed and they've murdered and they've done all these things. And they, you should just put them to death and that should be the end of them. And, you know, they're just horrible. And, and God would say, this person deserves a high priest. You see, when we take ourselves and we say, well, I'm better than that person, well, maybe we haven't committed as many sins as that person, but what, yeah, we've still committed sin, haven't we? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Sometimes we do that. We look at the, the story of the guy, of the man who prayed, and, and, and he lifted his eyes to heaven and said, I, God, I thank you that I'm not like the sinner over here beat his chest and the sinner didn't look up he just said God I'm, I'm a sinner God doesn't rank us on that but here's what he does do for us it's fitting why? well, well John 3.16 gives us a clue on that for God so what? Love the world. Well, well, surely God didn't know how corrupt the world would be and, and how horrible these people. I think he knew because God knew Satan before you and I were even created. He, he knew his ability. He knew his strengths. He knew his weaknesses. He knew what he would do. And, and so I think God knew that there would be people that, that we'd call good people. People that we'd call, eh, hey, okay. And there are people who would go, oh, okay, no, no, no that person and God would look at each one of those categories and say listen it's fitting now here's the interesting part God wants us to love him back his love is outgoing his love is always there but he wants us to love him back so when we look at verse 26, it's fitting for us to have such a high priest. Now, 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 here's some characteristics in verse 26. He's holy. Well, he needs to be holy. If he's the high priest, he has to be without sin. He is holy. Now that word holy carries several different meanings. It means different. Is he different? Yeah, he's different because he's without sin and he doesn't have that desire that, that maybe we have sometimes to sin. He's innocent. What's that remind you of? A, a child sometimes is innocent, aren't they? They don't know what, you know, many things that adults know. And they should. You look at a little baby, a baby's but innocent. And it doesn't know sin like an adult knows sin. Christ is, is innocent. He's undefiled. He's separated from sinners. Separated from sinners. Now, now there's one thing that can't enter into heaven. What's that? Sin? 
That's why Christ is our sacrifice. Christ has to make us holy. He has to take us to a place of where he is to get us to heaven. Well, how does he do that? Through his blood? Through the word forgiveness? He is exalted above the heavens. He does not need daily like the high priest to offer up sacrifices first of all for his own sins remember that the high priest would first uh, offer sacrifices for their own sins because they the high priest in the old system had sin and, and so before that you know it's kind of like when you're flying you put the oxygen mask on you first and then help those others if there's no way you're supposed to put the oxygen mask on your children before you put the oxygen mask on I, I know mothers do oh my child no you put it on yourself and then put it on your children the high priest system is exactly the same he had to be pure before he entered the room so he had to take care of his own sins first before he could do that for the sins of others. And then, of course, the sins of the people because he did it once and for all when he offered himself up. See, he offered himself up as a sacrifice. Now, 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 his sacrifice on the cross wasn't because of his sin. He's paying my bill. He's paying for our sin. You know, somebody pays your bill. It depends on what it is. Sometimes I go over this memorial bridge and I think it's 50 cents or something to travel over that bridge and I got little coupons, you know. I go there and I'll get to the door, the, the gate. I'll have my little coupon up and say, no, the car in front of you just paid, paid your way. Oh, well, thank you. That's nice. And sometimes I pay it for, well, pay for the guy behind me then. You know, there you go. You know. That's a little 50 cents. How much does our sin cost? It's a horrible death. So it's appropriate that we be given a high priest as the circumstances required, one who was totally free from sin. He had to be holy, which means devout, pious, pleasing to God. An Old Testament priest was to be holy since only a person could enter into the temple, he had to be forgiven of his sins before he was able to do that and be pure in heart, not merely one who properly performed liturgy. Jesus was untainted in sin, and we must be as well. Both Peter and Paul referred to Psalms 16 and verse 10 in identifying Jesus as the Holy One. Psalm 16 and verse 10. Let's look at some verses as we look at Jesus as our, as our great high priest, Acts chapter 2 and verse 27. Because you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor allow your Holy One to undergo decay. What happens when we bury a person? Well, we try to do everything we can to, to make the body last this long, but after years and years and years, it will undergo decay, unfortunately. Jesus says that, that, that body's not on Jesus' body's not undergoing decay. Acts chapter 13, verse 35, therefore he also says in another psalm, so Acts is referring to psalms, you will not allow your Holy One to undergo decay. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 11, for both he who sanctifies those who are sanctified are from one Father, for which reason he did not he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Hebrews 7, verse 27, who does not need daily? We looked at it just a moment ago at those who suffer sacrifices because Jesus did it. Jesus was sinless. 1 Peter 1, verse 19, but we with precious blood as of a lamb The Bible is very visual. And so it gives us a lamb. The 
lambs can be white. Many times they are. Sometimes the skin gets dirtier, but when they're young, especially, uh, it, once it's a year old, it becomes a sheep. Under a year is a lamb. So it's under a year old, it's more precious, isn't it? And so you have that precious animal. And so what happens when you cut into it, that white now becomes stained with blood, it becomes red. And because the, the animal is usually so white, you can really see that blood, see that red come out of it. And, and, and so that's a vivid picture, isn't it, of the animal when someone would cut into it, and then you have the blood coming out onto the white, and, and so now you have the red all over, and you would notice that. Notice this verse again, but with precious blood, as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless. Christ was unblemished and spotless, but he went to the cross. And we see that blood and spot on him. Not because of his sin, but because of ours. Our redemption through him is so lofty and wonderful that we too become unspotted. I want you to notice that. Our redemption through him makes us unspotted. It makes the guy who has done all these things wrong, if he's obedient to the word of God, are you saying that you can go out and kill 10 people and, and, and you know, like Ted Bundy or some of these others that has done all this? If they're obedient to the will of God. So, well, they don't deserve that. Well, wait a minute. We have to ask the question if we deserve it. And it's through God's grace that He gives it to us. His grace and His mercy on us. We're so lucky to have God's grace and mercy. Nobody. Really, does it, you, you can look at all the people in the world and nobody has ever earned salvation. No matter what they think, you say, well, you know, there's, there's these people that have spent their life doing this. No, they haven't earned salvation. It's only through that blood of Jesus Christ. Finally, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. We close with this. But we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness. <laughs> he knows that we have weakness, that we sin. He, he, he you know, and, and the Hebrew writer writes this verse for the following reasons that Christ came to this world and lived among us. See, it'd be one thing if Christ was up in heaven and saying, Well, you know. Yeah, it looks like they're doing okay, or they're not doing good, or they're doing bad, or whatever up there. But he came to this earth. You say, well, he lived in a century where things were different. Yeah, every century things are, are different. But he came to this earth and lived among us. Not for the differences, but to understand that when I take my finger and I put it there and I hit it with a hammer, I understand what pain is. When I see a temptation, when someone brings out a, a wonderful, my favorite, carrot cake, and says, here's your carrot cake. A temptation, I know we have all kinds of temptations. Well, when a temptation is sitting there, Jesus knows exactly what that feeling is because he's felt it. So we, we our high priest, you really think that the Aaron and, and the priestly system, that, that they understand how the people were? Probably not. Some of them maybe. Our high priest understands that. He can sympathize with our weakness. But, verse 7, Hebrews 4, 15, one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. That's our, our heart priest, 
Jesus Christ. Our priest, Christ, is better. Better than anything that has come before him, better than anything that will come after him, and you can just hold up that sidewalk around and say, better. But he wants us to be obedient to his word. That's our, our first thing that we need to do, isn't it? It is to be obedient, and then once we're obedient, we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for our sins, that, and we're willing to, to live our life for him. And we're baptized into Christ. Once we do that, we need to begin living a faithful life to Christ. Tonight, if you've not been baptized into Christ, why not? Or maybe you've done that. We need encouragement, prayers. We'll pray with you and for you. Why don't you come as we stand as we sing. Supper at this time. Still being the first day of the week, the Lord's Supper has been left prepared for those who did not have the opportunity to surround the table this morning. Uh, Jesus Himself designated these emblems to, rec uh, to represent His body. And his bride, and directed us to uh, partake of it when we come together. Let's do that this time. Our Father in heaven, we're so grateful for your Son Jesus, for the sacrifice that was made on our behalf on Calvary's cross. We're thankful, Father, for this bread that represents his body, and we pray, Father, that as we partake of it, it will be pleasing in your sight. It's through Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you also for this fruit of the vine that represents Christ's blood that was shed on Calvary's cross, the blood that cleanses us from our sins, makes us presentable to you. And we pray, Father, that as we partake, it will be pleasing to you. And it's through Jesus' name that we pray.
That concludes our services this evening. Is there anything else that needs to be announced? Hope to see everyone back on Wednesday evening for Bible study. If you'll bow with me, we'll have a prayer and be dismissed. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for the day that you've given us, for the opportunities that we've had to gather together to worship you. And we pray, Father, that the worship we've presented to you today has been pleasing to your sight. Father, we ask for safe passage to our homes. We ask, Father, for your guidance as we go about our daily lives. Help us to carefully consider the things that we say and do. Help us, Father, always to be shining our light to those around us. And it's through Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.